Hey friends, today we wanted to talk to you about money. <laughs> One of the most common questions that we get, uh, well, there, there are some there are some questions that are just common, but one of the most common is how much did that cost you? I can tell you right now, the answer to that is too much. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, how much does it cost you guys to roll down the road? And we're going to chat about that with you today. So the cost for rolling this rig down the road, our costs, which we're going to share with you, may be different than your costs. Costs are going to be very subjective, I think, based upon how you choose to roll down the road. I can tell you how we choose to roll down the road, and we're not living extravagantly when we go from town to town or boondocking site to boondocking site, but nor are we depriving ourselves. Okay. When we it's come, a, It's a mix. Yeah, when we come to a new town and there's something that we want to do or someplace that we want to go, uh, we generally do it within reason. I mean, we, we have given up some things, the, the higher cost entertainment things. We saw something recently that we wanted to do and it was like, oh, you know, that's like 185 bucks a person. A few years ago in a different lifestyle, we wouldn't have even thought about it. Today, we think about it. Yeah. But what I say all of that to say, you know, we'll share our cost with you, but you may live completely different than we do. So your cost may be substantially cheaper or your cost may be substantially more. For our traveling in the past year, we've traveled somewhere right around 24,000 miles. If we chose to only travel, say 500 miles, all of these numbers just will plummet well, down definitely. and be so much cheaper. So if you choose to go live like in the desert somewhere, and you know, drink your own urine or something like that. I mean, you, your your cost can Why be. Why does it have to be that extreme? You Why can't they just go and stay in one campground and not be driving? They don't necessarily have to go to the desert and drink their own urine. Yeah. So if okay. you're in the desert, <laughs> you know, like I was saying though, it, it's highly subjective. So let's let's take a look at our numbers from the past six months. So from July to December of 2020, you can see by this chart, we're chart people, we like charts, you can see by this chart that our largest expense was truck maintenance and then health insurance. Um, truck maintenance is because we had to get a new transmission and then we had to get something else in Las Vegas. I can't remember what that was. Something went out in Las Vegas and it was about $800, but I can't remember what it was. But, so, truck maintenance, we included that in our larger number, but if I take out the cost of the transmission and only look at, for truck maintenance, if I only take a look at diesel, propane, regular maintenance, like oil changes or tire, um, we had a flat tire, so a tire replacement, um, insurance for the truck, and camper, in both of those, and campground fees, including campground, campground fees. Then if we're just looking at those numbers, then it is, I scrolled up too far, about $1,787 a month is what it cost us. Now... We don't go in campgrounds very often, so our average camp campground fee um, is pretty small. For July through December of 2020, we spent about $630 on campground fees. Um, we, during that time period, we were back home with our kids and sisters, so we mooch docked. A new term we learned that we kind of like. So we mooch docked with our kids, with our sister, two of our sisters, three of our sisters, one of yours and two of mine. Yeah. So, um, and we boondock. So we didn't have very many campground fees. Um, our insurance costs about $135 a month. That's for our truck and the camper. We have full coverage on our truck. 
and whatever is required on our camper to, to, to pay for it if it were ruined. Um, I don't know what you call that. I don't think you call it full coverage on a camper. I don't really know. Yeah. But we have whatever the policy needed to be to cover our camper in full if something were to happen to it. Um, you know, I think on the, the, the mileage travel, this is the biggest variable that I think you would see depending upon how you're traveling. For us, having said, okay, we are, we've traveled roughly 24,000 miles in the past year, there's the cost of fuel. Mm -hmm. So if you're just sticking close to home and you're only gonna use this on a weekend, those numbers come way, way down. Or like we were joking about, if you're living in the desert, these numbers come way, way down. So if you drive to one destination and stay there for yeah. your vacation or for your month, as compared to traveling every few days. Yeah, yeah. yeah your, your cost of diesel comes down, your cost of maintenance comes down. Yeah, all, of, all the things related to like wear and tear and upkeep of the truck itself, those, those numbers just come down significantly. Right. So for us, diesel alone was about eight and a half percent of our total um, expenses from July to December in that six month period. And I think that's about it as far as covering what does it actually cost per month. For us, it's about $1,800 give or take yeah. that's a six month average right so yeah right. the common question we get is how much did it cost uh, we bumped into a young fellow somewhere I don't know uh, I, I don't know where he was and he he really really liked the camper he said oh my gosh that's beautiful it's amazing he said how much did it cost and I just said well how much do you do you think it it cost and he said, oh, something that beautiful, I think about 10000 <laughs> That's what it no, should cost. <laughs> no, just no. So I, I can give you a little backstory before I give you the numbers. Uh, the backstory was we purchased this in 2020. And at the time of our purchasing it, there was this raging worldwide pandemic going on. And RV you sales... You probably didn't know about yeah, that. News to you. <laughs> RV sales just skyrocketed yeah. so the dealer that we bought this from in a typical year they turned their inventory over one time uh, in 2020 they turned their inventory over four times so when we talked to them and tried to negotiate in a, in a very polite way they told us <laughs> no we're not negotiating anything the price you see is the price you pay so we had looked around at a couple dealers and we were seeing whether we were looking in the central part of the country of the U.S. or the eastern part of the U.S. or western, the prices were all relatively the same within, you know, a few thousand dollars of each. Maybe I could find one. Actually, I guess I did find one cheaper somewhere like Vermont, but then I had to add in that the reality of I've got to go get it in Vermont. I've got to incur the cost to, to get there, the incur the cost to get back, sales tax, these kinds of things. So really... It was just the wrong year to be buying uh, a camper, an RV, or whatever. I don't think 2021 is a whole lot better. Yeah. So here's our numbers. So total, total selling price for what we have here, which is the 2020 limited edition, leg, or no, legacy edition. Yeah, legacy. Uh, which gives us the Fox Landing. And then in addition to the Fox Landing, we did a backup camera. We did the fast guns. Mm -hmm. We did the suspension modification. What's that called? Timbrins. It's timbrins. And a 100 watt solar. An extra. Extra 100 watt solar. And then we added a mat for the camper to sit on in the truck bed. The rubber, rubber mat, yeah. yeah. So bottom line for us, including tax, $43,476.95. So I, if and that did, our budget for yeah. all in was forty thousand. I don't so. know. Well, I don't know about you, but for <laughs> me, that number made my sphincter pucker. It still does. Yeah, we're still yeah. in a state of shock that that's how much money we ended up paying for this. But when we looked at used systems last year, people were selling their used 
like two, three year old campers. Even for, up to five years yeah, old. For only two or three thousand dollars less than a brand new camper. Yeah. And at first I thought, well, you know, we're going to get all of these modifications that the camper truck owners or truck camper owners have done to their 990s and we'd save money that way. But we really didn't find that the owners had done a lot of modifications that would justify, at least in my my mind, the, the price being so high. So really for us, it was just a situation of being caught in, you know, supply and demand economics. Yeah. So I think on a different year when sales were not booming, I, I think we could have had more room to negotiate. But last year, that dog didn't hunt. And the truck. The truck we, we purchased, I want to say, for $22,500. Yeah, that's what I think, too. We paid $1,000 for the truck to have it transferred from Houston to where we were residing temporarily in Colorado. Uh, within six months, three months of owning the truck, the transmission. So hey everybody, uh, we're back. So both of our GoPro batteries died last night, so. Cause that's how we roll. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's a new day. So kind of picking up on where we were last night. Uh, so for us, the transmission going out in the, the truck substantially raised our cost of ownership of how much it costs to, to run our rig down the road. So Noel was saying it was like 7,500 bucks yeah. uh, for the transmission. The and way, other work that they did at the same time. Yeah. Like quite a bit of maintenance that had not been done over time. Yeah. Part of that, I think, was just expected with buying a older truck. Yeah. It was a used uh, truck, so it's going to need some work. So our truck's a 2005 Dodge Ram Dually 5.9 diesel. Uh, 3,500. 3,500, yeah. Also hybrid. Yeah. We added that like ourselves. That. So... The truck cost uh, like twenty two five to get in, then seven five on the transmission. We had to get all new brakes, all new tires, and then just the general upkeep. So, if you already have uh, your own truck for a truck camper, uh, that's not an expense that you would incur. It's just an expense that we incurred. I think the other common question, really, kind of as we we wrap this up, uh, people want to know, like, well, how did you pay for this? And I think the answer for us is pretty simple. Uh, we paid with cash. Uh, we didn't finance. Uh, some people finance. They spread out the payments over you know X amount of years. For us, since we had budgeted uh, to be like unemployed for several years, it wasn't that we had Don't money. Say several. What if Becky sees this? <laughs> oh, what if my financial advisor sees it? Uh, so I mean, he means one year, eighteen months. Yeah. Eight, Becky. 18 months, Becky. <laughs> yeah, so we've just passed our 24 month anniversary. Anyway, uh, so we had set some money aside already for travel. Uh, we didn't set aside this much money. Uh, so for us, it was money coming out of savings. Uh, plus we had the camper van that we had purchased in 2019 that we sold. So it wasn't that we dropped all of this cash all at once. Plus we had a little bit of money from my dad. Yeah. My dad passed away in January of 2020, and so we had a little bit of cash from him, which, yeah, yeah. So for us, I, I think if we had like sat down and been able to do the math, which we honestly we couldn't have done, and forecast ahead, how much was the truck going to cost us plus truck repairs, which is a big one plus the camper, that might have brought us to like a different price point discussion of do we really want to get a truck camper or do we really want to think more about like a Class C RV? So yeah. I, don't, I don't know what the right answer is for you. I can only give you the numbers that existed for us. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments, uh, whatever, go ahead and leave them in the comment box below. Definitely give us a thumbs up. We'd appreciate it. And if you're going to hate on us for the cost, just uh, find a different video to hate on. <laughs> so s since we were talking about uh, Noel's dad passing away and kicking in a little money towards uh, Cupcake, we thought it'd be fair uh, for those of you that don't read our, uh, 
our blog. Oh, by the way, we have a, a website, www.stephennoel.com. We post there just as much as we post on YouTube. Uh, so about once a week, we have new content. We share where we're going. Really, on our website, we share from a written perspective and then pictures, uh, posts. So there's just as much information there, maybe more actually, than what you're going to find on YouTube. But anyway, <laughs> on there, we already talked about it, uh, how we got the name Cupcake, Cupcake Chronicles. So for years, Noel's dad, his name was Clyde, Clyde and I, I think I started it, uh, Probably. Uh, just because I, I like to tweak him just a little bit. Uh, when I would see him, I'd say, well, hey, Cupcake. And after a while, it got to a point where he would say, when I, I'd say, hey, Cupcake, he'd say, well, hey, sweetheart. And he had this thick, you know, Louisiana Southern drawl that he'd roll out when he said, uh, yeah. hey, sweetheart. So it just seemed appropriate to us since some of his money was going towards our camper truck that we would name the camper truck after him. And our logo that we have on the back of here, the cupcake, we've laughed because uh, just the way the, the frosting swirls on the top, uh, he would get a kick out because he was bald. Like, <laughs> so, Since I can remember pretty much. <laughs> so he would have appreciated it. So there yeah. you go. There's our, our non-financial, uh, just random information dump. How yeah. Cupcake got her name. Yeah. There we go. <laughs>